All right. I practiced this about where it should go. So anyhow, <laughs> welcome everyone. Um, you are here for the um, Early Childhood Cares Parent Chat on fun activities to do with your child. And we're scheduled to last for about an hour. We'll see if we go that whole time. And um, I wanted to just say, I talked to you about recording already. So I want to say that I don't know if you know about much about early childhood cares, but you know, we are the um, early intervention and early childhood special education program for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers in Lane County. All services are free of charge to el eligible children. Um, and you can go to our website, which is where the materials, where this link to this presentation will be. And the handouts or any, you know, the handouts or PowerPoints from today will be on our website, which is earlychildhoodcares.uoregon.edu. And if you have any questions, you can always call 541-346-2578. And uh, we'll also be posting these on Facebook, not the handouts, but the, the YouTube link. So, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Judy Newman, and I'm your host today. Um, I'm the senior advisor for Early Childhood Cares. I was the founder and director of Early Childhood Cares, so it's a program that's very important to me. And I want to just say that we have four presenters here from our staff. You're going to hear first from uh, Don Melchow, who's a speech and language pathologist. Rachel Taylor, you want to wave? <laughs> oh, your name, you're labeled. <laughs> Rachel Taylor will go second, and she's an early intervention, early childhood special educator. Sheena Taylor will go third, and she's another EIECSC specialist. And Aaron, Aaron uh, Dent, who is another EIECSC specialist. So I'm going to turn this over to, <coughs> to Don, and I know I am going to be the screen sharer. And I'm going to ask if you don't mind one of the other participants to uh, monitor the chat, if there's anything we need to know about, would one of you be willing to do it? Sheena said, great. Okay. So let us know if there's anything that comes up there. So let me um, mm. open up Don's. I'm going to go for it, Don, and I'll get this open. You want your PowerPoint, thank, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Don Malco, and I'm, I'm a speech language pathologist, as, as Judy said. Thank you so much for taking time to come here tonight. Um, and this is very much um, a chat. So I just wanted to sh share ideas. And if you have questions that come up throughout, please let me know. Are you guys able to hear me? I'm hoping so. Okay, good. Just just checking. Um, here's an example of <clears throat> kind of some ideas that we can have for building speech and language throughout the day. Um, I got a lot of this information from the American Speech and Language Hearing Association, also known as ASHA. It's a great resource if you're interested in speech and language. Um, but thanks, Judy. Could, could we go to the next slide? Uh, so I've been a speech language pathologist for since 2017. Um, and recently we had a new member join our family. Uh, her name's Lucy. Uh, she's a seven month old. So I'm, I'm thinking a lot about language and what we're trying to surround her with throughout each day, which has been really fun for our family. Some of these pictures that I'm going to be showing you all, you guys are going to, you, you're going to be seeing pictures of uh, my nieces and some of my family. So hopefully it'll have some good ideas for what, how you could have speech and language within your day. Um, if you don't mind moving to the next slide, Judy, thank you so much. So following directions, um, my niece is down there in, in the corner. She is baking cookies. Uh, that's something that if you, if you wanted to be able to do with your, your child, you could do a simple recipe. Um, you could have pictures of the ingredients. You can make it kind of as easy or as hard as you want. What are we gonna do first? What are we gonna do second? Um, children can start to learn about numbers and measurements while cooking. Uh, it's pretty likely it's gonna be messy, but, but uh, sometimes if you, come in with a lens of knowing that the mess is, can be fun and children are really engaged in learning through that, um, that could be a great time. There's also things that you could do like scavenger hunts. Um, you could have, you could be doing um, uh, classic, those classic games such as, I don't know if you all are familiar with Simon Says or Red Light, Green Light. Um, Simon Says is something where you would kind of 
to see if your child is able to, to listen for when you're um, asking them to kind of do a motion. So that's kind of an example of a following direction game. Uh, go ahead and move on to the next slide, Judy. Thank you so much. Um, some, something that you can do is sing songs or rhymes throughout the day. Um, things like row, row, row your boat or wheels on the bus. Um, we just recently took, took part in a, in, a, in, a, in a parenting now group, which has been really fun because we've been learning lots of fun songs to, to sing with our daughter throughout the day. Um, so, and it, it's really become a routine that we'll, we'll sing, um, good night, Lucy, good night, Lucy, good night, Lucy, we're glad you came to play. And we just really try to keep it light and fun. And I don't consider myself an expert singer, but I just do my best. And I think to really see her eyes light up has been really enjoyable and fun for me. So it's kind of, if you're willing to get out of your comfort zone, or if you love and enjoy music, you should share and spread that with, with your child. Um, if we're gonna, for our next slide, we're gonna talk about uh, building vocabulary and describing. You could do this um, if, if you wanted to engage with puzzles with your child, if you had any different crafts that you wanted to set up, if you had any access to Play-Doh or clay. Um, I just tried to show um, a nature walk. This is just out, outside, we were playing in the leaves. Um, you can be asking questions like, you know, what, what do they see and hear? Do you feel a breeze? How do the flower petals smell? Um, talking about the colors or birds and the squirrels doing, you could ask them to tell you more. Um, and it seems, I think it looks like my, my niece there is kind of digging through the grass and, and, and the leaves and Lucy's just kind of having her first experience with the, le uh, with the leaves. So um, we're just, you know, trying, tr just trying to enjoy being outside. And we'll move on to the next slide. Um, telling stories is another way to surround your child with speech and language. Um, I'm a huge proponent of the public library here, and I think all of my coworkers would would agree that it's it's just such a great resource to our community. Um, that uh, during you know during this time, there's been openings for digital subscriptions. Um, and if you yourself have magazines or newspapers, those are things that you can go through and look for stories. Um, I, these are my nieces that they're dressed up um, in costume and that's a way that they, they could be telling a story. I think one is looking like a bat as an animal. So we, she, we, during an activity like that, you, if, if you're dressing up in any type of way, it's really using your imagination. Um, you know, what sound would a bat make? Or, or it, it looks like you're flying around all over the place. Just kind of some examples there. Um, for our next slide, we're, oh, we're gonna talk about describing emotions. So my niece is holding my daughter there, Lucy. And I just think to, to just, she might not have the word um, for wonder or kind of awestruck, but that's a word that we can start to give her because I, I think if you look in her eyes, you know, she's, she's definitely just feeling an emotion that she might not be able to put a word to, but we as adults are able to say, you know, wow, this is a really special moment. That one in the middle is Lucy sticking out her tongue. She's looking kind of silly. So we're hoping to let her know like, oh, you're being really silly right now. Um, is that, that looks really funny. And I tried to show myself there on the right as being extremely tired, just as a, a new dad. I know as being a parent isn't all, you know, fun and games and th 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 I'm just exhausted. So I think it's important if you tell your, your child, you know, you're allowed to tell your child if you're feeling really tired or, just zonked. Um, I think that's extremely important just because, you know, you're being open about how you feel when, when you're tired and you're, 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 you're feeling maybe out of sorts. And so you don't have to, you know, be perfect all the time. It's okay to, to share and build that vocabulary for just feeling really tired and my hair looks a mess. And, you know, that's just how we are sometimes. And for our next slide, um, here's an example of uh, sequencing and pr predicting. So you can be using like a, a breaking down a task or a story. Like if you're reading a favorite book or they're going to the bathroom, what are we going to do first? You know, first we're going to, first we're going to do this action and then we got to make sure to do this one. You're kind of hel helping them know that the actions that you take, you have to do in steps. Our, our families really enjoy the Llama Llama books. So I don't know if you ever 
Um, that's just a recommendation from me, just because of the kind of the silly rhymes that we were talking about before. Um, and I, there's a, just a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge there, because sometimes if you take long trips, you know, you can talk about, you know, where do you think we're going to go next? You know, first we have to get gas, and then we have to do this. Um, thanks, thanks so much, Judy. And then we'll move on to persuading. Um, so children can use many different tactics to get their way. Um, some of those tactics can be crying or whining, kind of to protest, to, to let you know that they really want their things to be done. And they're just, they're using the, the skills that they have to let you know what they want. So you can help them learn to persuade with their words if they're able to, or with signs or gestures. Um, you could have them draw a picture of their favorite book and tell you about it. Um, and, and then we could, you know, we could all read it together. If they wanted to watch a TV show or a movie, you could ask them, can you, can you persuade me? Like, can you give me a good reason why, why we should watch this show and see what they're able to come up with for you? Um, that's just a, a different idea that we have there for children that are, you know, able to express themselves verbally. And for our last slide, we have uh, summarizing. So during this time period, um, we've been doing video calls and that's just a way to um, see, we, we're, we're speaking with a relative at this time. And I think that interaction is just really important for them to make a connection with um, whether it's grandparents, other family members or friends. I think it's just really in, important during this time period. And screen time is often kind of talked about. I think it's, it's very complex because, you know, during this time period, it's helping us stay connected in some ways, which I'm so happy that I'm able to talk with, that we're all able to talk with you. But, um, you know, it's not, I think we want to control the amount of, of time that we're on it. And we just want to think about if, if they're on a screen, what, what other things are we sacrificing for them to be on that screen? So that's, that's my, um, that's kind of my little presentation about speech and language throughout the day. I'd love to answer any questions if anyone, if any of them came up or um, pa pass it on to the next presenter. Thank you for your attention. I appreciate it. I don't see any questions in the chat, but I saw um, possibly someone has an emoji hand up. Hello. No. Yeah. That was, was an accident. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh no. No, no I, worries I at all. Just joined. Right. Hello. Wel welcome. Hi. Hi. I wanted you to know that we're recording this, so you can. Uh, the, yeah. <clears throat> so I also wanted to just say Don mentioned the library and how much they'd like to use that and um, some of you may use it live in Eugene some of you may live in Springfield or in outlying areas but if you contact the library in your in your city area, you can get a, a, a card for free. And Eugene, the Eugene Library now is offering free library cards for, for people who live out of their catchment areas. And there's also ways to sign up for uh, um, scholarships to get them. So if that's something you want, you are interested in, don't know how to do it, ask your service coordinator or call your library. We'd be happy to help you make sure you have access. It's really, you know, it's really a great resource if you can get yourself to the library. So, okay. Our next presenter is Rachel. And Rachel, do you want me to share? You know what, if you want to, um, you can either share if you want to make me a co-host, I could pull it up. I will make you a co-host. How's okay. that? Sounds good. There you go. All righty. Let's see here. Let's give me just a second here. Okay, give me just a second. Maybe. All right. Okay, so we're going to do you. All right, so 
Today, I wanted to share an idea for an activity that can be done in lots of different ways and can be, um, you know, can work for young kids or older kids. Um, it, it's the idea of a rainbow scavenger hunt. So colors of the rainbow and um, you could do it on the fly. You know, this is something that I like to do as a parent. It's kind of one of the tools that I have in my pocket if we are um, needing something to do um, and just kind of thinking about an activity that could happen inside of the house or out on a walk, um, but introducing the concept of a rainbow and talking with your kids about the colors of the rainbow, um, really, you know, labeling the colors, the order that they go in, um, also can lead into um, some really cool discussions about what are rainbows and just finding out, you know, if there's information that um, kids know already and talking about how rainbows are formed. Um, but one of the ways that you could do it is outdoors. And I think it's really fun to do. Um, my favorite time to do this is in the springtime on a walk when all of the flowers are blooming and there's just so many colors everywhere. Um, and it's nice to have, if possible, um, a picture of a rainbow to show a child as you're starting the activity to kind of talk about the sequence of colors that you might be looking for. And that could be pulling it up on your phone. It could be if you have a storybook that has a picture of a rainbow. It could be, you know, if you happen to have crayons or um, markers, colored pencils and could draw a quick rainbow, just something to have that reference so that you're giving a visual to the child of what color um, they're looking for right now, what color they'll be looking for next. And um, so you can start at the top and have the child, depending on, you know, some children will be able to label the colors, some might need you to say it for them, but helping them see by pointing it is really helpful. So they see it on the rainbow and then also um, see it as they're looking for it in the environment. So it could be, um, if you're walking, it could be really just like pointing out like, hmm, look, next we have blue. Let's look for, um, I wonder what we're going to find. I wonder if it's going to be a blue flower or I wonder if it's going to be a blue bird. Um, and just talking about the different things and then um, encouraging the kiddo to find something that color and then talking about what comes next. Um, so just some examples of, you know, depending on the time of year, I went outside today and I was looking around and I said, well, I see green and I see brown. <laughs> in the, you know, in the spring and in the summer, there's more colors all over that make this easier to do outside. Um, Let's see, did I talk about, so I talked about outdoors. So also this could be something that could happen indoors. If you just happen to be sitting around and kind of um, want something a little more, you know, something engaging to do with your child inside, you could play the rainbow scavenger hunt with toys. You could play it. Um, this was a thought I had. I haven't tried this yet with my own kids, but I thought it might be cool is like even with sorting laundry. So like look at a picture of a rainbow and say, I wonder if we could find each of these colors in the clothes. And depending on their level, maybe they could fold it and put it away, which would be really fun to practice. <laughs> but um, lots of different ways that it could be used. Um, let's see. So again, very similar to outside, just going through each of the colors, um, giving children a chance to think about what might come next instead of just saying it right away can be really helpful to just give them that time to process and think think about it for themselves and see what they come up with. Um, so I have some ideas for adapting this activity for, you know, various levels, depending on, you know, the age and just kind of where the child's at and what they're able to do independently or what they might need more help with. Um, so if a child is not yet able to just look at the color on the rainbow and go find something on their own, you can try showing them two different things. So maybe first point out on whatever rainbow picture you're looking at, oh, next we're gonna be looking for yellow. This is what yellow looks like. And then have, try to find two things that you could hold up, one being yellow and one being a different color. And then hold them up and then let them be able to kind of, they can make a choice. You know, They might look at it to show you, they might be able to point to it or grab it, but it's a way for, um, if that's one way to present it so that a child can participate. Um, and then kind of an extension of it would be um, 
oh, kind of like a, the next level up might be like a kid that really wants to do it on their own, but they might not be quite there yet. So they might just be running around grabbing things because it's super fun to mm. be in a scavenger hunt and um, maybe giving them something that they could hold. So if you were on green, maybe you give them a blade of grass or a green ball and say, look, when you're looking, remember, we're looking for green and they could hold it and go and try to kind of match it up to something else that is that color. Um, so if a child is already able to do it pretty easily on their own, then you could kind of expand or kind of extend the activity by asking them to find as many things as they can, you know, maybe say, I wonder how many uh, purple things you can find in two minutes and having them find and then be able to count and maybe even compare the different colors so that they could um, be a little bit more challenged if they were ready for it. Um, as far as the extension, I talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but just thinking about ways, you know, to go beyond the fun of the scavenger hunt and looking at the colors of the rainbow, but just talking a little bit more about, um, you know, that concept in nature and finding out if there's things that they want to learn, maybe um, using, you know, looking up some more information on it that you could kind of learn about together. And then, um, I think this is my last thought on this was just different ways that you could document it to make it fun for the kids to really help them see the progression of the activity and the beginning and the end is thinking about how you could document it. Um, I know that my kids love to take pictures of things when we do this. So like if you're comfortable having the cell phone right there that they can take a picture and then when you're done, you can kind of flip through and you can see, oh, there was our red flower. There was our orange and they're yellow and be able to look at it that way. Um, they could also, oh, so you could check mark. So like if you have a quickly drawn picture of a rainbow, the kids can make a check mark after they find each one. And my, fi my final idea was that um, they could, you know, a kid could be encouraged to draw pictures. So, you know, draw a picture of whatever you found in that color. So just some um, different ways that you could involve your child in documenting the activity. And I believe that is it. <clears throat> Did I see some hand raised. I'm not sure if that was from this or does anybody have a question? Just unmute yourself and ask. Yeah. Galaxy, your hand is up. <laughs> oh, I think I think you're you're on mute. There. I didn't mean to press the hand earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> sorry okay. to put you on the spot. No That's worries. okay. Okay. Um, should we move along then, Rachel? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I don't know if anyone is looking in the chat box, but I just wanted to point out that when I talked about library cards, uh, someone also put mentioned, reminded me that there is the Dolly Parton Library. And that's is a, an opportunity through the Eugene Library, actually through any library in Lane County, because United Way expanded it to all libraries. You can uh, sign up to get a book for each one of your kids under five or six years old every month. And it's, it, they're free, they come to you in the mail, they're awesome books. So, and I think they're available in English and Spanish, uh, you know, depending on the, your primary language. So it's- Is that true that they're English and Spanish? Cause I know they advertise it in Spanish, but when I've asked in the past, they're like, no, we're just advertising it in Spanish, the books are in English, but has that changed? No, I believe you have to sign up as a Spanish speaker, you don't get both, but if but you-, you can. You can well, get full information. But if that is not true, please let me know. But okay. yeah, I was involved in getting it started and I saw the books they picked up. So I don't oh, know if it's a limited right. number or not. So let me I know. I have a question. Know. Yeah, thank you. I have a question about that. Yes. Um, I tried to sign up for that and I don't remember there was something that kept stopping me. Um, I don't remember there was a, a certain question. I don't know if it was like um, who referred me or some kind of like, uh, I don't remember exactly. 
if it's who you refer, refer to, you could say EC Cares, but I don't think you can, you could just refer yourself. I mean, so uh, if you get stuck, do you have someone that you work with in our program? Um, yes, Ari. Yeah, why don't you ask Ari and he'll find okay. you if not, or you're welcome to reach out. Rachel, did you have something to say? Yeah, I was just going to say that I have found with some families recently, it gets a little bit confusing. If you are on the Eugene um, Public Library page, it asks you, there's a tab that says check your address. And if you're not within, like there's some addresses on River Road and some other areas where it says you don't live within the district and it won't let you. But if you actually go to sign up without checking your address, I think the United Way, it seems like it's getting covered a different way. So I think some parents just check to see if their address is available or eligible, and it comes up that it's not. But if you just go through the actual sign me up, then you can. So it's a little bit tricky that way. I have a question. Yes. Um, regarding the library card, I'm, I'm Cree's grandmother, and I have him during the day while his mom's at work. Does Junction City, is that we're new here, so is Junction City part of that that program you were talking about, a free library card? I think you can get one through Junction City, but let me, um, if you wanna put in the chat to me the name of your service coordinator, I will get an answer back to you. Whoever, the name of the person that he works with in our program, or just, just give me your contact in the chat if you feel comfortable, just to me. Okay, where would that be? If you the, do, you have a chat down there. Um, it says chat somewhere. I don't see that. I'm sorry. Well, let's stay on after, and I'm going to get your contact. Sure, sure. Okay. And then Judy, there was a comment in the chat from Julie about there being a similar program um, for Jewish children. Yes, um, it's called PJ Library. And Julie, do you know how to get people to sign up for that? Yeah, you just go right to that link that I provided. Um, and it's different, like, uh, well, I guess maybe it's similar. I'm just looking at the Dolly Parton, but basically you just sign up there and then they'll automatically, it takes a few months until the books start to come, um, but they come once a month, they're age appropriate. And um, then within a few months, your name will be sent to the local coordinator and then she will put you on her list for local events which of course will get better hopefully in a couple months. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah. And it's it's very much geared in many ways toward interfaith families and really any kind of Jewish family is um, welcome to that program and their free books. Great, thank you for sharing that. It is a great program. My grandkids were part of that too. We've enjoyed many of the books. Okay, are we ready to move on to Sheena? Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all. All right. Can you all see that? Thumbs up. Okay, great. Um, so I um, have been a classroom teacher for the past um, four or five years. And so when I was thinking about what activities to share with you guys, I really thought back to what have been the kind of handful of activities that have been um, super fun for the kids that I've seen and that don't take a whole lot of prep. Um, and that also um, you may have some of the materials already in your home. So I compiled kind of a list of six or seven. I'm super excited to share with you. Um, the first one, um, is spray bottles. So um, who would have thought like just a simple spray bottle can have so many different ways of playing with it. Um, and I also love this because it's a great way to kind of strengthen um, those little muscles in the hands too. Um, and so one of the ways that you can um, play with a spray bottle is if the weather is permitting and you have some chalk, you can go outside and make some numbers or letters and play kind of an erase the chalk game. Um, and that's also a really good way of um, maybe working on if your kiddo is working on identifying letters or numbers, you can play a game of, oh, find the letter A, let's erase the letter A. Um, 
Also, if weather is permitting, you can um, kind of water the flowers and the trees and the bushes with the spray bottle. Um, and that's also a good way to um, talk about what you're seeing, working on those descriptive words. Um, and then lastly, over here, this picture is um, if you have a little bit of um, paint, you can make kind of this paint water and um, you can put a piece of paper on a fence or you could lay it on the ground and just kind of spray it and see what kind of designs that you can make with the spray bottle. Um, and if you don't have a spray bottle, I, I wanted to add that you can find them really cheap at the Dollar Tree. They're about a buck a piece. Um, but if you have a kiddo that can't quite um, squeeze a spray bottle, I found these. And this is just a condiment bottle from the Dollar Tree. And what I love about this is it's super easy to squeeze. And you can put, um, you can put the water or the paint water in this and they can use this to erase the chalk. Um, you know, but if it's weather is not permitting as, um, you all know right now we've been getting a lot of rain. You can take this activity um, into the bathtub and you could put some baby dolls in the bathtub and they could wash the baby dolls or the, um, the cars or whatever toy is plastic and that can go in the tub and you can turn it into a bath time activity. Um, so that's my idea around the spray bottles and the little condiment bottles. This one is just super fun in the bathtub as it is. My daughter, this is where I got this <laughs> to share with you all. I took it from her. So I'm gonna have to replace it. Um, all right, next we have, oh, a mail and mailbox pretend play activity. Um, we would do this every year in the classroom during um, community helpers theme. And if you look over here, it is super easy to make a mailbox out of two pieces of paper. You just kind of staple them together and then you can tape them up on the wall and then you have your mailbox to put your mail in. Um, We've done this in my home and I would kind of label every mailbox a different friend or family member. And then we would go and we would make our mail. And that can be really as simple as bringing out some of your junk mail. We all have junk mail, right? That comes with all the envelopes and um, you can decorate the envelopes with the little sticker tabs. You can bring out the markers and the crayons and the scrap paper, and you can write your letters and mail them to all your family. Um, it's just a really great kind of imaginative um, play activity. Um, this little guy, it looks like they made him kind of a mail hat, of, of just kind of um, stapling a piece of construction paper together. So that is always a hit. Um, in the classroom for um, that community helpers theme. And again, it works on all of those um, fine motor skills and the, you know, getting the kids um, scribbling and making all those marks on the paper. Um, next, oh yes, painting ideas. I wanted to, um, tell you guys about just kind of different ways you can engage with paint. Um, we did this in um, my virtual classroom today. We drove little cars through paint and um, we just kind of squeezed and poured a little bit of paint on paper and then they took a car and they drove it back and forth and it makes a really cool design on a piece of paper. And let me tell you, they love this activity. This one is always a hit. Um, and then similar to that over here, you can take, um, if you have any little plastic animals in your home, you can dip their feet in a thing of paint and stamp it on a piece of paper and it makes a different design. Just another fun way to engage with paint. Over here, we have the Legos. Usually everyone has those big Legos or Duplo blocks. You can. Um, dip those in paint and then make different designs as well. And then up here, 
we have um, Q-tips. If you have a Q-tip, you can um, take it and dip it in the paint and make little dots on paper. Um, the nice thing about the Q-tip painting is it kind of forces them to use that, um, that pincher grass, pincher grip that we wanna see kiddos using because they're, they're really tiny. So that's always a good one. And then up here, we have painting with water. Who knew you could um, paint with water, but you can. Um, and it works best obviously on construction paper. But if you just take a little container of water and some paint brushes and you could tape that um, piece of paper to a wall perhaps, and then um, the water darkens the construction paper. So, um, and this is a good one for um, maybe the younger kiddos, the toddlers who you aren't quite ready to give paint to. <laughs> so those are just some different ideas to engage with paint. And this one, um, this is an idea to um, kind of transfer toys into just um, a different bin. So you have a tub of water um, and you put some plastic toys in there, um, maybe numbers, letters, um, whatever you have. And you give, um, if you have a pair of tongs or you have the, I think it's a slotted spoon you can just encourage your child to transfer the toys from the tub of water into um, a different bin. And um, this is one that I would do in the kitchen, maybe put a towel down because it's gonna get, you're gonna get water everywhere. Um, but it's also a good one to work on like color identification. If, if that was something your child was um, working on, you know, you could play a fun game of um, first let's find all of the green toys. Let's move the green toys and now let's look for the red toys and kind of um, encourage that skill. Um, and then you can mop your floor afterwards, right? Because there's going to be water everywhere, but um, still a fun one. Let's see. Next, um, oh, the rock painting, painting rocks. This is kind of um, one that you can go outside with your child and maybe take a walk and gather the rocks together. Um, you could talk about the different sizes of the rocks, the big rocks, the little rocks, the bumpy rocks, um, and then bring them back and paint them together. Um, and then afterwards, after they dry, you can go hide them and go on a rock hunt. Um, we do this in the classroom, but we paint the rocks and then the next day we hide them in the classroom and we kind of go on a rock hunt together. Um, so definitely could do that in the home as well if you weren't able to get outside. Um, but just another kind of fun one to get you outside. And lastly, um, this one <laughs> is straw cutting. If you have just the little dollar store straws like this, kids love to cut straws because I'm gonna show you here. If you cut the straw, it takes off flying across the room and they just love it. It gets all the giggles out. Um, and so it's a good one to work on um, scissor skills. Um, and especially if you have a child that isn't um, very skilled with scissors, um, it's kind of, you can just work on the opening of the opening and the closing of the scissors. And like I said, you cut and they just fling. Um, and so that activity has always been a hit in the classroom. Um, and the last thing I'll say about that one is you're probably thinking <laughs> it, they're gonna go everywhere. It's gonna be so messy. I don't wanna pick up all these little tiny pieces of straws. Um, but what you can do about that is after you're done, you can turn it into a super fun game about picking them up super fast. And let me tell you, the kids love to see how many straws they can pick up super, super fast and you just make it exciting. And then before you know it, all of your little tiny straw pieces are picked up. <laughs> and 
that was it. Those were my super fun activities and just have fun with it. And I hope that, um, I hope they like them. Great. Any questions for Sheena? In the chat, someone said, we haven't gone there with paint yet. <laughs> Try the water. <laughs> Some people probably went, oh my gosh, but yeah, use the water one, exactly. Water, and then washable paint. Always get the washable tempura paint. You know, like exactly which paint to buy. I use, um, there is a paint that from the classroom, it's just tempura, or there was a paint um, that I use in my home. I just got it at Walmart. It says washable. It's like $1.66 for a decent sized bottle. Washable paint. But what about tempura? Is tempura, that's like what they use at preschool, but is that washable? Yeah, definitely. Tempura washable. is washable. Yeah. And you know, you can even water it down a little bit. It's that much easier to wash out when you okay. get it. But tempura is washable is what you're telling me. Okay. In my experience, yes. It's always came out of clothing, off the tables. Who knew? Okay. And then what about the rock? What paint do you use to paint the rock? That's a good question. Um, you can use tempura paint, um, but then it will come off. It will wash off. So if you go hide them outside and it rains that night, you're going to wake up to rocks that aren't painted anymore. If you want it to stay, then you would need to use acrylic, but that be really careful with that because that is not going to come out of clothing, off tables. That's something you're going to really want to be cautious of, but it will stay because I, I have some in my rock garden that I use with acrylic. Very helpful, thank you. And I'm so glad that Sheena, you mentioned, I have a drawer full of envelopes because that's an activity I do with my grandkids too. Mm -hmm. Every time I get an envelope, you know, with an insert, I save it. I literally have a drawer, but you can do a major post office event with those. And they come to, it, I feel so good because I don't have to recycle them or throw them out. Absolutely, yep. Great, thank you. We have one last presenter. We're gonna have Erin here. Okay, hello. Um, I have um, what, well, I'll have Judy share in just a minute is um, I had created some activity handout. So it's not a PowerPoint, but right at the beginning of um, the shutdown in March, when everything shut down, I kind of had this momentary like, oh my goodness, all of these families are gonna be stuck at home with their kids. And oh my goodness, I need to come up with some ideas to support my families who are stuck at home with their kids. What can we do? So that was kind of where most of these handouts came from. And I don't know, I'm gonna at least share two. I had four handouts, the handout that, um, and I, so I believe they're gonna be attached somehow that you folks can um, get um, download or look at another time. And um, the four I have, I have one on a scrapbook. I have one on paper towel rolls and bubbles and recyclables. So I think, Judy, do you have it queued up to share the first one? What do you want me to show first? Um, why don't we do um, the scrapbook one? And this one, actually, I just did. And this one's very near and dear to my heart because um, it's actually a project from at least like I think 17 years ago from my own son that he did with his grandma um, a craft thing and here we go so there's the picture can you is that can you guys see that okay whoopsie I'm just gonna do this I'll make it bigger <laughs> there so I just kind of I, the, these are handouts that I had made with the idea of ease for the family so this is just a simple scrapbook activity and you can see the pile of the materials that you're going to need a cheap binder um, i use some uh, file folders because those were strong and um we used um we used newspaper he was really into appliances and machines and vacuums and so we just used the little inserts from newspapers and um the idea then, Judy, if you scroll up just to the next page of that, is basically you create a notebook, as you see, punch holes in the file holder, in the file folder, and literally that is it. 
because then you can go through your um, scrap paper and if your kids can use scissors, then they can cut it out. Or if not, you can cut it out and they can practice pasting the things they like. And then um, we layered it with, he added stickers to it and he scribbled on it. And it was just a neat scratch scrapbook of things that he enjoyed and that he picked out. Um, and it was simple as that. So um, I think, is that the only one on that one, Judy? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. And that actually, that lasted us for several days because we would go back and um, keep adding the pictures to it of whatever we found. So that one was super fun and easy. He was about three, I think, when we did that. Um, and most of the activities, I'm, go ahead and you can cue up the next one, Judy, when you're ready. Most of the activities that are um, that I have are um, so, sort of geared for ages three to five, but definitely can be adapted for the younger kids. So for example, um, this one is the activities with recyclables. So I have all of the different clean recyclables that I went through and pulled out of my recycle bin and I washed. And then um, the first activity down there is a pretend play. And that's exactly it. Putting all of those um, groceries in, pretending to do um, grocery store with the kiddos. Um, we could have a little play kitchen for the kiddos. Um, any kind of thing that you can use your imagination with the groceries as groceries. Or if you go down, the next one is homemade blocks with the recyclables. And this is one where younger kids really might enjoy it um, because they might be able to knock it over. But all I did was take different um, rectangular boxes and wrap them in different paper. And you could even use like newspaper or the brown bags you can cut up and wrap and kids can also color those. Um, but as you can see, you can make that look into houses. Um, so you could, again, you know, do your little cars in between that or just stack the blocks up, knock them over or throw a pair of socks at them. Um, super simple. That's exactly it. So that was the recyclable one. I was going super easy on these because I wanted it to be, you know, when you have just a few minutes, your kids need something to do and you don't wanna to have to think too much. So here's the bubble one. Um, this one um, has the recipe for the bubbles on it. So that, that's a good one. Um, and your kids could help depending on their level, but they certainly could help. And the neat thing is the, the biggest, the hardest thing for me was figuring out the wand. So a pipe cleaner is really helpful and you just take it and you can see, you can just loop it like this. I don't know if you can see my little thing. And there you go. And it actually, that little pipe cleaner will hold it. The other thing though, is I took a pencil and um, I had a little bit of ribbon, but you could use a shoestring and tie it onto the pencil to make a loop. And that actually made really cool big bubbles. Um, and so that's a neat, a neat activity because kids love bubbles of all ages. And the little ones who maybe aren't able to um, grab or pop or blow bubbles, they sure like to watch them and just see what they look like. And then um, the next activity on this is also uh, similar to what Sheena was sharing, but if you're not able to go outside for the bubbles right now or don't wanna deal with bubbles juice all over your house, just plain soapy water. Get them in the bathtub and um, have all sorts of different add-ons like sponges or spoons or old egg beaters that you spin. Kids love those. Um, I took an old, um, that was an old um, uh, vinaigrette bottle that I washed out and put the little cap back on. And you could squeeze the water and squeeze it down and the kids were able to make more bubbles. And so that's a really fun one because they like, they can get wet. You can do it in the bathtub and um, keep it contained that way. So I just add on. And then I had one more, the paper, the paper roll one is our last one. 
So I think this was the first one I created. And I think it's really funny because I just was take like, what can we do? And I came up with all of these, what can you do with like a toilet paper roll? And so that came from that. I think I came up with three or four on this one, but there's a lot of other things that you can do too. So for example, the first, um, let's see, was, oh yeah. The first one is you take a paper roll, you um, take your hole puncher and punch a bunch of holes in it and you thread um, pipe cleaners in it. Pipe cleaners you can get at any craft store or at um, the dollar store, or you could probably ask your service provider to get you some um, pipe cleaners. And it's a great skill for little kids to try to thread those pipe cleaners in through the holes. You could make a spider. You could have the kiddos decorate the tube before you punch it. Um, so it's very fun and very easy and it can keep them occupied for a long time if they enjoy um, trying to thread that thing in there. So that's one really simple one. And then the next one is a ball roll. Again, super easy, just um, hold on to your uh, cardboard tubes. And as you can see, I just taped those tubes onto my wall in different ways. And I put that bowl underneath and I used it as a maze. And in this particular case, I think I use puff balls, but you could also use um, cotton balls. Um, you could use regular little toy balls or Hot Wheel cars. Kids um, and the young kids like this too. Love that cause and effect. I put it in and it goes down. Put it in, it goes down. Maybe it makes a different sound. Um, so that was again my paper towel roll one. And then um, the last one is just binoculars. Easy peasy. You take two <laughs> toilet rolls and you put them together and you either tape them or you can rubber band them. And this one you can do when you do um, Rachel's uh, rainbow, when you guys are out looking for rainbows. You do a little I spy with the paper towel rolls um, or look. Um, at each other with the different roles, that kind of thing. Find wild animals if you're doing your pretend play. You can go on a safari. And um, it's just, it's something that most of us have in our house and can put together really quick. And then you can kind of use your imagination to build on it. So um, I think, yeah, that's all I had on those. And like I said, the Activity sheets are, um, I designed them very simply so parents can just grab them and look at them and go. So that's it. So you stimulated me because I remembered we used, we always take paper bags and open them up and then do either with sponges or paint or markers and use that as any wrapping paper we use. And maybe you even want to have an unbirthday party if you really are looking for some fun. The kids can wrap up stuff they already have and on some paper that they make and, and have a fun, fun unbirthday party. So any questions for Aaron? Comments? I have to share one more thing if you don't mind. Oh, did someone have something to say? No. Um, I was just reminded, I have my grandkids here this afternoon. So I don't know if you've seen these before. They're noodles. I ordered them online that you can get them at a swimming pool. Um, I cut them in half. And I have kids who get really antsy and sometimes they start hitting each other with stuff they shouldn't. You can actually have a very safe and fun lightsaber fight or um, some, something like that. You just using these, if you have anything like that uh, around the house. So, yeah. Anyone have anything else? I think we're sort of at the end. It's, uh, one minute to five. And I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us. And, um, I want to remind you that our next parent chat is Monday. February 22nd, you'll see this in the news, and it's on simple stress relieving tips for busy parents. It's an hour from four to five. 
And then the, la the last one in this series, this term is on Monday, on Tuesday, sorry, March 16th um, from four to five. It's an Ask an Expert. And we'll have Natalia McComas here from our program, who is just an amazing uh, wealth of knowledge about social emotional de development strategies with young children, um, ideas about behaviors, to help address, you know, if some of us have like bags of tricks, she has got a huge, she has just got a wealth of knowledge. So you can just come with your questions and 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 uh, she'll probably have some really good suggestions. What's the date of that again? It, uh, the name of the session is Ask an Ask Expert. And when? <laughs> the date? Oh, the date, I'm sorry, is March 16th. Great. It's a Tuesday from four to five. Perfect, thank you. And you'll get those in the newsletter and hopefully we'll have flyers. You can always go to our website. These would be posted. And again, the handouts from today will be posted and a link to the video on our website. And the link to the video will be on our Facebook page. So with that, I'm gonna again, thank our presenters. Thank all of you for coming and have a good evening. Great, thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, Judy.